I know this might not seem possible, but we are at the end of the semester. We're at the term project, and that's the point of this video. The, pro the term project for this semester is going to ask you to read Edward Bellamy's Looking Backwards. And it may st strike you as a little bit odd that I actually ask you to read a sci-fi novel um, as part of your term project. But actually, this, uh, this novel lends itself to several of the issues, concepts, and themes that we've been talking about over the course of the semester. Now, I'll talk a little bit about the book here in just a few minutes, but for the time being, the best thing that you can do when it comes to preparation for this assignment is to read Bellamy. You're going to want to get yourself a copy of this text ASAP. And like I told you once upon a time, you can find this virtually anywhere for cheap. As a matter of fact, I find mine at a local half price books for about $2.50. So you can tell that it's very, very affordable. Now, you may have seen at some point in your life, you may have seen a bumper sticker that read something to the effect of the, 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 the labor movement from the people who brought you the weekend. If you are a regular on Union Talking, that podcast that uh, consists of our lectures, you know that labor and working class activists had been at the center of reform movements that changed life in America here in the United States throughout the course of the 20th century. We started this class talking about the Knights of Labor and their push for an eight-hour workday, a standardized eight-hour day. They didn't quite get there at the time, but by the time that the mid-20th century rolled around, certainly eight hours was your standard operating procedure. We talked about this inter-class uh, movement predominantly, but not exclusively, of women throughout the early 20th century, what is typically known as the Progressive Era, and how they were seeking to provide protection for people that could not protect themselves. We're talking women, we're talking children, we're talking urban dwellers, we're talking about immigrants, and above all, we're talking about the working class. You know, those people that could not provide protection for themselves. We've talked about the labor, we've talked about the Wagner Act and how that this was the law that gave you workers the right to form unions and obliged their employers to bargain collectively with them. And we've talked about how unionism paved the way for the emergence of a blue-collared middle class in this country by the post-war period. And certainly we have seen very clear connections between the labor movement and, and not only the civil rights movement, but also the feminist movement. You get the idea. Workers throughout the course of the 20th century have very much been at the core of change, however you want to slice and dice the definition of change. So, what is Bellamy, what does Looking Backward have to do with labor history? Well, Bellamy published this book in 1888 in the midst of the Gilded Age. And for those of you that are ankle deep, ankle deep you can tell me that this is a book that starts out with a guy by the name of Julian West, who is an upper, upper class gentleman from Boston who has this habit of getting quack doctors to prescribe what you and I might call sleeping medication for him. He likes to fall asleep easy and stay asleep throughout the course of the night. The only problem is on this one particular occasion, his doctor prescribed just a little bit too much and he sleeps for the next 113 years. Julian West wakes up in the year 2000 and what he finds is that the old Boston that he knew in the Gilded Age, that Boston is gone. It's almost unrecognizable. And his, his physician, the guy that's looking after him, a Dr. Leedy, asks him, what was the burning question? What was the big issue of your time? And of course, Julian West responds with uh, the labor question. It, it was the great labor question. And so the rest of the book kind of consists of uh, Julian West being brought up to speed in terms of what has changed and how we're beginning to see this emergence of a classless utopian society. Well, the bottom line is, guys, uh, Bellamy found a very, very receptive audience in America. Now, for those of you that have some familiarity with um, early American history, 
you can tell me um, that the names, you know, things like Brook Farm, issues like Brook Farm, they were a big deal in the middle part of the 19th century. Some of you may know the name Mother Ann Lee and the brand of Quakerism that she helped to establish, and of course I'm talking about the Shakers. So this idea of retreating into the wilderness and trying to create this utopian society, it, it would have been recognizable to Americans in, in the later part of the 19th century, in the, in the Gilded Age. The bottom line was, looking backward, was a massive, massive hit. In the United States alone, it was estimated that there were over 160 Bellamy clubs. These were book clubs that got together to discuss the merits and critique the, the, the arguments of, of, of his book. So it was a very, very influential piece of literature. And I also might add that it inspired a few utopian experiments of its own. So let's talk a little bit about the assignment. This assignment is going to ask you to use the novel Looking Backward as a starting point and to construct an essay that explains how labor and the working class history, the lived experience of the American working class, the reform measures and achievements that uh, progressed throughout the 20th century, or the organizing campaigns that were influenced by labor activists throughout the United States, really kind of took their toll by the dawn of the 21st century. How did they change life here in America by the year 2000? In other words, you know, did Bellamy get it right or are there gaping holes that he really did not account for? Some issues that are important to consider include, but are not limited to, the political impact of organized labor and what that impact made in American life. How did the labor movement, how did workers, generally speaking, influence American culture, broadly, broadly defined? Or how did the labor movement or workers create a sense of American identity over the course of the 20th century? So ask yourself, what reform measures, legal codes, or changes were brought about due to working class activism or organized labor, broadly defined? Was Bellamy's prediction uh, of the inevitability of a classless utopia accurate? Or did he get some things very wrong when it comes to uh, the, the, the dawning of the 21st century? Did he fail to see the ways that industrial capitalism, for example, could find ways to reinvent itself? Those are the things that are important to consider as you begin to prepare for this assignment. Now. Like prior assignments in the, uh, that, that we've had already throughout this course of the semester, it may be useful to, to bring some of the primary documents in the modules button, the Blackboard, into the conversation. Bring some primary data into the conversation to, to, to buttress, to back up some of the broader points that you're trying to make throughout the course of your analysis. There are plenty of examples of workers and, and organized labor fighting for equity, fighting for fairness, fighting for democracy throughout the course of the 20th century. Um, find them. Find them in the modules button and bring them into the conversation. Now, to that end, the podcast Union Talking in the lectures button of uh, Blackboard is also you know, fair game. Uh, when it comes to providing historical context, and I, I just can't say enough about historical context and how and why that's so critical, so important to bring into the conversation. We historians, we, we, we are the scientists of context. Now, that's basically all I have for you in the way of preparation and approaches, possible approaches to this final term assignment. If you do have individual questions, please do not hesitate to let me know. I will hold my regular office hours through the course of this week, but uh, for the moment, I hope that this has offered a little bit of food for thought, or at the, the absolute very least, put your mind a little bit at ease with respect to ways that you might be able to come at this assignment. I'm rooting hard for you. As always, please let me know if there's anything that I can do to elaborate on anything that we covered here or, or not. Best of luck to all of you. It's been great working with you over the course of the semester. It's been even better getting to know a few of you. I wish you the best of luck as your academic career here or elsewhere unfolds. 
I'll see you later, everybody.